Now I'm sure it's absolutely on all of your lips that there are 78 days to go until Christmas. 78 shopping days. So being a generous man, I thought, well, what am I going to buy my fellow political leaders for Christmas? Rishi, dear Rishi. I think he needs a couple of pairs of long socks to close the gap between the top of his shoes and the bottom of his trousers. We know he's frugal, but really, surely he can afford some new trousers, not his school trousers. And then I thought of dear Kia. Difficult choice. Flip-flops. No, not good enough. No, I thought actually what he needs, he needs one of Blackadder's cod pieces to protect himself because he sits on the fence so much. And then, and then there's, a, there's a, some other bloke, Ed Davies. Anyone, uh, anyone know how you find him? Anyone know where he is? I concluded, actually, he doesn't deserve a present. I'm sorry, Ed. But actually, I thought instead, I thought we'd just remind ourselves about a bit of biology because Kieran and Ed seem a little bit confused. So there's a short clip, hopefully, that will play on the video of Kier and Ed with Nick Ferrari. Play it away. So a woman can have a penis. I'm not. Sorry, I'll get this. No, 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 it's just... Uh, no, 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 I just... So a woman can have a penis? Well, quite clearly. <laughs> you couldn't make it up! How do you think Putin's going to feel faced with that on the other side of a negotiating table? He's going to be terrified, isn't he? What about Xi Jinping? I mean, for God's sake, we can't have these people running our country. You'll be pleased to know that I do know what a woman is. And more than that, I'm actually a very lucky man because I'm blessed with the support not just of one great woman, but two great women. Yes. Yes, because I know you might say that's greedy. But I have huge support and help and affection from the wonderful Isabel, which I massively, massively appreciate. And my God, in her own right, hasn't she helped the country with the lockdown files? But, but secondly, the other woman in my life, who is also strong, powerful, and not to be messed with, but it's actually very generous with some seriously great advice, wisdom and political knowledge, is of course widows, I call her, Anne. Yeah. You'll, you'll be hearing from Anne later. Now, what I did discover when I was thinking about this, about the Lib Dems, it seems to me that the only thing they're good at is accumulating knighthoods. I mean, you've got Sir Vince Cable, Sir Nick Clegg, Sir Ed Davey. I mean, what do they give Nigel? Ah, I remembered. They gave him a hurricane named after him. <laughs> <laughs> hurricane Nigel. And that's the truth. A lot more influence and a lot more powerful force. It's only three letters to Hurricane Richard, anyway. <laughs> to the serious business of the day. Because the truth is, the country is in a shocking, shocking state. Let's be under no illusion, the con-socialist Tories have broken Britain. Labour will bankrupt Britain, as they always do. And it'll be left to Reform UK's policies, frankly, to save Britain. So let's just look at how the Tories have broken Britain. Firstly, we've got workless Britain. A record number, 5.4 million people on out-of-work benefits. We've got Waiting Britain, a record high in terms of hospital waiting lists. You have to join a secret waiting list 
in order to join the official waiting list of almost 8 million people. We've got lawless Britain, shoplifting completely out of control, knife crime completely out of control. But the Tories, in their absolute brilliance, they said, right, we're going to ban machetes as long as it's got a logo on. So guess what? The machete manufacturers manufactured machetes without logos on. They're still legal. That's the incompetence of these people. Absolutely shocking. And then the, another massive bugbear. I have to say, I've got so many bugbears at the moment. We've got net zero Britain. <laughs> Boo, quite right. Be under no illusion. And I've got a new, a new spot with GB News. And every Sunday, Britain's favourite Sunday sermon. Do listen out for it. Last week, I started. And I'm... <laughs> Genuinely. My first Sunday sermon with them last week, I banged on about net zero. If you haven't seen it, take a look back. Had over well over 130,000 views. I talked about the greatest financial negligence that's ever been imposed on this country by its leaders. It is an absolute shocker. It's sending our jobs and our money overseas. It is a catastrophe. Now. If you want to laugh, ask your friends, and your friends are friends, just ask them how much CO2 is in the atmosphere. You'll get some hysterical replies. You'll get head scratching. You'll get, oh, I don't know, 5%, 20%. I've even had 50% quoted to me by people that I thought were intelligent. I know you all know the answer. It's 0.042 of 1%, but that's impossible to understand. What is that? Well, I thought we'd use a bit of an example. So I'm hoping now on the screen will appear a picture of Wembley Stadium, a full Wembley Stadium. It's 100,000 people. 0.042 of 1% is 42 people in that stadium. It's basically a football team, subs, some dodgy manager and a few physios. Unless it's Jurgen Klopp, in which case it's fine. That is the total amount of CO2 in the atmosphere if you assume that those 100,000 people represent the atmosphere. The UK is responsible for 1%. That's 0.4 of one person in that stadium. That's basically, it's a couple of legs or a couple of arms. Ah, I'm not finished. No, because of course, there's a lot of natural CO2. And scientists will argue, what is, how much is the human-induced CO2? Some people say it's as low as 3, 4, 5%. Some say it's 50%. I'm a generous man today. I'll tell you what, it's 50% of all CO2. So that's 0.2 of one person. It's one limb, whether it's a leg or an arm, in the whole of Wembley Stadium. That is what is the human-induced CO2 from the United Kingdom across the whole planet. And for that, the zealots, the cultists in this new religion, they want us to change our cars, they want us to change our boilers, they want us to travel less, they don't want us to eat delicious, wonderful, succulent steaks. They want to change everything. And we need to tell them that the answer is no. Be under no illusion. Voters across Europe are now rebelling and revolting against this appalling madness. Meanwhile, China and India, they're building between them about 300 coal-fired power stations. Coal consumption and production is at record highs. I must be on the right track because even Sir Tony Blair... Boo. Even Sir Tony Blair has admitted that what we do on net zero is completely irrelevant because the growth in China's emissions in every year is just the growth of their emissions is greater than our emissions. It's madness. And it's destroying our jobs and it's sending our money overseas. The only zero, if we're not careful, will be the amount of zero in our children and our grandchildren's bank accounts.
and we've got to stop it. We're the only party that has the courage to stand up and tell the truth about this issue. And, and if you think the vitriol and the abuse we got on Brexit was bad, it's like a round of drinks compared to what it is when we talk about getting rid of net zero. I'll tell you for why, because Brexit was in the heart, it was an emotive, a passionate, a sovereign thing. Whereas net zero, for the vested interests, they can smell, they can touch, they actually are benefiting hugely by this massive transfer of wealth from all of us to those vested interests, and they don't like it. So actually the abuse is even worse. Now, so we will campaign against that. Nigel talked quite rightly about the other issue, which is we are mass immigration Britain. The numbers are so big it's hard to calculate. 2022, 1.2 million people given permission to come and live here. The net number is actually a bit irrelevant because the way they count it, frankly, I wouldn't trust as far as I could throw it. This year there'll be another million plus, next year another million plus, and the Tories seem quite happy with it. That's lawful immigration. Illegal immigration, completely out of control again. Totally out of control. They've no idea what to do about it. Warm words as usual, but no idea how to stop the boats. I'll come back to it. We do know how to stop the boats. The illegality that's going on around the country as a function of this. Have you noticed the mushroom in barber shops opening up everywhere? Yeah. Has our hair suddenly started growing faster because of COVID, for heaven's sake? <laughs> or the candy shops, or the car washes. This is all illegal money laundering of money from drug dealing and from other heinous crimes and activities. This illegality is all over the country. No one else dares talk about it. We will, because it's affecting all of our communities, our villages, our towns and our cities. And then finally, the last thing that's broken about Britain under these Tories, woke Britain. I mean, seriously, this gender ideology has poisoned our institutions, our public sector, our big corporations, and most seriously, and horrifically and dangerously of all, it's affecting our children in our schools.